Men in Black International is the fourth installment in the Men in Black franchise. Can also be looked at as a reboot since it does not star Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, but this film stars Tessa Thompson, Chris Hemsworth, Emma Thompson, who's one of the few characters that actually is from the first three movies coming over, and then of course Liam Neeson as the head of this division. This film is directed by F. Gary Gray. For those of you who don't know, he directed such films as like Straight Outta Compton, he directed The Italian Job, um, Beta Furious. He's a director that I personally, his work I found to be okay to meh. And this movie, I'll be honest, I was not looking forward to it. I personally, I only really like the first Men of Black. Actually, check that. I love the first Men of Black. I think it's a really, really good comedy. I'm very tough on comedies. I dug it, though. I thought it was really great. Second one, I didn't like at all, actually. Third one, I thought was okay. It was uh, more in line with the first, but not quite, not even close. And I was like, come on. I want that, that whole spinoff where it was like, you know, Men in Black and 21 Jump Street combined. Like, I thought that was a really good idea. Instead of getting that, we're getting essentially a reboot sequel. So, as you can tell, I wasn't excited. And the trailers didn't help any either. See, Sony has this thing where they like to oversaturate AMC theaters with the same trailer over and over again. I saw the Men in Black International trailer at least 100 times. And it annoyed me every single time because I didn't laugh at all during the trailers. So I was skeptical because, again, there's just all the skeptic things that are just, like, to be whole, especially because the oversaturation of the trailers and the unfunniness reminded me a lot of Ghostbusters, you know, the 2016 version. And unfortunately, it, 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 it it's, it's, yeah, it's just like Ghostbusters. Um, it's a shame too, because you have such a great cast to work with, but the cast... The cast is really the only good thing about this movie, but they're kind of underutilized when you think about it. They're not given much to work with. That's one of the main problems because we've all seen Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson in, you know, obviously Thor Ragnarok, you know, Avengers Endgame. They have great chemistry. They have great rapport. But I feel like it was really lacking in this movie. I know some people are saying that it was one of the few good things, but I didn't even think that was really good. I thought the humor was very flat. I didn't laugh at all. At all. I laughed a lot in the first Men of Black. Heck, even the third Men of Black had a couple funny moments. But this one, I didn't laugh at all. And I always tell myself, okay, sometimes a comedy's not funny. Sometimes there's more to it. Wrong. Because in this case, the story is, it, it's very bare bones. Everything you see coming a mile away, especially the big twist. Because the premise is simply that there's a mole in Men of Black. And when you find out who it is, it's like, oh... I didn't expect that at all. It's like, come on, you, you knew that was gonna happen. I also think the visual effects were actually really surprisingly like, bad. I, I didn't find them to be convincing at all. You could tell a lot of when the VFX was. You could tell what was practical and what was, you know, obviously not filmed in camera. And it stinks. Even the Men in Black score was kind of underwhelming. I, I mean, there was a lot of moments where I was like, eh, eh. And I don't like feeling that. And I especially don't like feeling as if I'm watching Ghostbusters. Because I, I'm telling you, I really did feel like that. The film felt very forced. Every single scene didn't feel true. It didn't feel organic. It felt as though it was a studio collaboration where just every single scene was to get the maximum effect from an audience. And it just didn't work for me. I felt like it was trying too hard. And at the same time, it wasn't even just basic. I felt like it was below basic because... Cinematography, sound design, you know, chemistry of the actors, just everything felt subpar. And I always hate that. I hate it when a movie is below generic, especially when it's like, you know, I go out of my way. You know, I did a double header and I watched this because I was like, hey, you know, maybe the marketing isn't doing it justice. You know, I've seen that before. And it's like, no, I, I, I was wrong, unfortunately. Uh, Men of Black International for me, it, it's a terrible movie. It really is. It's a shame because, again, given the cast and the talent that's behind the lens, you would think that this would be a better film, but unfortunately it's not. And that's why me personally, I have Black International, I'll be giving it a one out of five star rating, um, which, yeah, no hot sauce rating. It, it's, it's a bad film. And I just wanted to 
give a sideline. I think that if the script was better, and not only just the script, but the visual effects, a lot of things, pretty much everything, this could have been a good film. But alas, we have uh, another Sony film in the vein of Ghostbusters 2016, where it just reeks of unnecessary things going on throughout the movie and just a very thin plot. And it's a shame, really, because again, it had potential. But nonetheless, Men in Black International, what did you think about it? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. But also, rank the Men in Black films down below. Uh, for me personally, it goes one, three, oh, that's tough for, the, for what's the lowest, um, two, and then Men in Black International. That's my ranking. Let me know yours in the comment section below, guys. And as always, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, and I'll catch you guys later. I'm getting tired of these Men in Black movies.